In this video, we are going to use the Python surprise library to implement an item-based collaborative filter. Surprise is this Python library that's made entirely for recommendation engines and doing data science related to this uh, purpose. So what we are going to do is we are just uh, installing the scikit surprise in our Google Colab instance. So re remember to enter it in this way with an exclam exclamation mark and then pip install scikit surprise as you would normally do in Python. And we are just importing some classes from this library, the KNM basic, dataset and weed classes. And after that we are importing some uh, data structures and uh, helper functions just to help us later on in the implementation. And we are also importing the OS and CSV module just so we can read in our dataset later. We are going to use a real world dataset called the movie lens dataset. And it's this big chunk of uh, real life user ratings of uh, movies. We are just going to perform this, these commands. It's going to take a while, so run this piece of code and uh, get a drink or something because it's uh, kind of big. Uh, it's a kind of big file. All right, so now we have successfully downloaded the movie lens dataset. And you can see it here in the printout from the execution. We have a unzipped directory called ml latest, latest small and um, sample data. You can also see it in the sidebar here if you navigate into the folder ml latest small. There's a readme. There are two CSV files which we are going to use later. The movies.csv and the ratings.csv. And next we are defining a function just to help us load in the data. This function is actually going to do two things. The first is to load in the ratings into a format which are, uh, which surprise can understand and interface with. And the other thing is that these movies in our ratings.csv, they are actually not referred to by their actual names. They have unique movie IDs, which are numerical. And later on, we want to actually give a user a recommendation of movies. So we want to be able to take a movie ID, which is a number, and get the real, get the human readable movie name in return. So these are the two things this function is going to do. And the first thing we are going to do is to load in the ratings.csv dataset into a format which surprise can actually understand and interface with. So the first thing we have to do is to use surprises uh, reader class. And this reader class, it's a reader which allows us to parse data in a way that's uh, compatible with our own data set. So for example, surprise doesn't know how all CSV files aren't formatted the same way and they don't have the same data and the same uh, order or columns, for example. So we are going to specify it in this reader instantiation. And I happen to know that our ratings.csv file has the format of uh, each row has uh, four different values. The first value in a row is the user. The second is the item, the movie's ID. And the third value is the rating itself. And the fourth is the timestamp. So we're just, just entering it this way. Make sure you enter user, item, rating and timestamp. And the sixth second argument in this uh, 
constructor is the SEP, which is uh, short for separation. Because if you have used CSV files before, you know that, that CSV is short for comma separated values. But the thing is, CSV files can also use other signs than commas to separate their values, even though it's counter intuitive to the name itself. So we are just going to ensure that, uh, so we are just going to specify that commas are what are, what is sep separating these values from each other in each row. And then the third argument is the skip lines. And some CSV files have this kind of header where the first row is uh, something that says uh, user item rating timestamp, for example. And it's not re a, really a part of the data set itself. So we are skipping the first line in our ratings.csv. And then we are using the dataset class we imported from Surprise as well. And it's got this, um, uh, this method called load from file where we specify the path to our ratings.csv uh, and we enter our reader to parse the CSV as a argument as well. The dataset class also has other methods, for example, uh, creating a dataset from a pandas data frame, for example, if you have uh, used that before. But now we are using the load from file method. We want to be able to look up a movie's ID and get the real human readable name in return. So we are going to need to read the movies.csv. And this movie CSV file, each row is a movie and each row has the movie's ID and its um, name as the first and the second value in the row. So we are, we are just reading this CSV file and adding entries to this Python dictionary where each key is the ID of a movie and each value is the name of the movie. And we are just returning and we are returning both the dataset itself and the this movie ID to name dictionary in a tuple so we can just uh, call it nicely like this, which we are going to do next. And so we are using the surprislib datasets method called build a full train set. So we are going to use the entire train uh, data set of ratings.csv to base our predictions on. And everything seems to run fine. If you remember from the previous video where we implemented collaborative filtering, item-based, on our own, there was a pretty, there was a whole lot of code to calculate the similarity between items and stuff like that. However, this is where a surprise slip is really convenient. This is all there is to computing a similarity matrix. So we imported this KNM basic class from surprise slip, uh, which is uh, a class for computing, uh, similar things, for example, similar items or users as you would do in collaborative filtering. And we are creating an instance of this class. And in the constructor, we are entering this argument called sim options, which is a dictionary. And it's important to supply this dictionary on your own. In this example, we are using the cosine similarity metric, but you can change this value to a whole lot of other things. For example, I believe there is a Manhattan distance, Pearson similarity and stuff like that. You can check out the surprise slips uh, documentation to see all the similarity metrics or distance metrics you can use in this argument. And the next 
item in this uh, dictionary is the user-based. And this is basically surprisingly asking you, do you want to do user-based collaborative filtering? Do you want to find the similarity between users? And we are entering false. We are saying no to that. And this implicitly means we are using item-based collaborative filtering. So even though we don't state it explicitly somewhere, that's the case. And after we have instantiated KNN basic instance, we are fitting this to our training set. So we can think of it like here, we defined how to compute something. And here we define what to compute it on. And after that, we are just calling the compute similarities method. So let's run this and it may take some time because this data set is much bigger than our previous where we had something like five users and three items. We're talking about thousands of uh, movie ratings. So be prepared to wait for a couple of minutes. Great, now the similarity matrix is finished computing. So uh, let's go to the next section here. So we want to generate recommendations for one specific user. So we are randomly picking a user in uh, the dataset, which in our case is user 500 and make sure this is specified as a string and we want to get uh, recommended items from uh, based off of the similarity of uh, this user's top 20 items. Run this cell. And here's where things get tricky because in there are raw and inner IDs. Raw IDs are the IDs, strings or numbers that are used when you create a train set. So for example, the data from um, the user data and the movie data from ratings.csv, the file, are strings, for example. But when you transform this data set into a surprise-lib data set, surprise-lib kind of convert these IDs to, to its own style, which are numbers. And this is so that the, the library can more easily perform the computations needed. So in order to actually find a user inside your train set, you need to convert this raw ID to the inner ID. And luckily, SurpriseLib has uh, methods on this, on the training sets for doing this. However, you need to keep this in the back of your head and remember it. So, because it can be kind of tricky remembering and thinking of it at times, but it should come. So we just want to get our test subjects inner ID by calling on the train set, the method called to inner UID, to inner user ID. And we get a number from this. 499 apparently. And uh, we want to get these users ratings and we want to get the top 20 of them, which is uh, what we are doing here. We go to the train set, uh, ask for the user ratings um, and supply our test subjects inner ID. And this uh, list of uh, ratings may be really long. In this case, for example, you can see that it's uh, 86 items long, but we just wanted top 20 to base our recommendations on. So what's going to happen next is we are, we are creating this K neighbors list. And uh, in short, it's just going to be a sorted list of ratings where the user's top rating 
will be on the uh, front of the list, the leftmost items. So it's sorted in this descending order. Let's run this cell as well. And next up we are creating this dictionary called candidate. And uh, we are doing this kind of default dict. And the default dict is basically a normal Python dictionary. But when you try, when you use a normal Python dictionary, when you try to access a key that doesn't exist, Python throws an error or exception. Uh, but the default dict which we are using here just creates that entry in the dictionary instead. We are iterating over k neighbors. So we start with the highest rated items and go down the list. And we try to get the, uh, we access our similarity matrix and look up this item ID. And we try to find the most similar items to this uh, item. And for each item in the similarities list here, all items that are similar to our current item, we are appending, we are adding it to the candidates uh, dictionary where the key in the dictionary is the items ID and the value is the score. And we are going to have this kind of bias for w how to look at the candidates later. So the items that are similar to the most number, to the highest number of items in our top 20 K neighbors uh, will be the one that's uh, accessed first. Um, but feel free to look at this piece of code on your own and try to understand it step by step. I tried to explain this more in depth earlier, but it just became such a long video. So, so run this as well. And next up, we are just defining a kind of utility function uh, where we enter a movie's ID as argument and get its a name in return. So uh, I had some, some, let's run this cell as well. And now we are practically done. So we have all of these items that are similar to our user's favorite items. However, we don't want to recommend something which the user has already seen and rated. So we are just going to build a dictionary of all I movies that the user has watched. And um, that's what we are doing here. And after that, we are creating this recommendations list. And um, we are call calling a method on our candidates dictionary, which we created here, which is the items method. And it returns a Python list of the dictionary's items or values. And we are going to sort this list in a descending order. So the high, mm, so the items that were similar to the most items in our usage favorite list will be in the front of our queue we can call it and we are just checking that if the similar item has not been watched by our uh, test subject we are appending it to this uh, recommendations list and we are calling this get movie function here just to append the movie's real name and we are only appending 10 movies so we, if uh, position here gets over 10 we quit and after that we just print out each movie in our recommendations list. So let's go ahead and run this code and see if we actually get some recommendations in return. We did. We can see here that the top rep recommended item was about Adam from 2000. 
So let's try again to change a to a different test subject. And the thing is, here you may notice the one of the be benefits of collaborative filtering. We can reuse the same similarity matrix and save a lot of time. So uh, let's do user 70 and uh, rerun all of this code. And we got a different set of recommendations. Uh, Oliver Twist, Infamous, uh, Bride, and Priyadis. I thought it was Pride and Priyadis, but I, I'm not really into those kinds of movies. Uh, but yeah, this was basically all you need to do to um, implement an item-based collaborative filter in Python using Surprise. Coming next, I would I recommend you to read the documentation. You can read all about uh, how what kind of similarity metrics you can use in Scikit Surprise and uh, what algorithms. There is not only collaborative filtering and neighborhood-based. And uh, that's it for today. Hope you gained some value from this video. Uh, in the future, I'm thinking of doing something about um, uh, ratings themselves. Uh, for example, there are explicit and implicit ratings. Explicit ratings being those you most intuitively think of. For example, a user giving a movie a zero to five stars. However, in the real world, you may use a different way to collect data. So for example, you can view the fact that a user has bought a product or not, view the product or not as implicit ratings, where it's an indication of what, what a user thinks of a product, even though they haven't actually told you i'll try it it's a pretty interesting topic so uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you feel like you're hearing about that someday and i'll see you the next time bye